Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we got that dreaded pound name error again. We're going to talk about what to do when your date criteria doesn't work in your Microsoft Access calculated fields. Today's question comes from Riley in Lake Forest, Illinois, one of my Platinum members. Riley says, I'm trying to make a calculated field on my customer form to sum up all of their orders in the past year using DSUM, but I keep getting a pound name error. What am I doing wrong? Well, this is something that I see a lot and a lot of people make this mistake, Riley, so don't feel bad about it. It's an easy mistake to make. In fact, I make it too from time to time. Pound name basically means that Access has no idea what you're talking about. If you're trying to use a function like date, it's like, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. So let's, let's see exactly what you got going on here. And, and by the way, Riley, as, as soon as you sent me some screenshots of your database, I, I, I knew exactly within three seconds. It's a common mistake. Let's walk through it. Before we do, though, a couple prerequisites. This is an expert level class. That means it's a little more advanced than just the basics, but it's not quite developer. We don't have to do any programming. This is all just regular functions and some other stuff. Let me show you exactly what you should watch before watching this video. Of course, we're going to be using DSUM, and that lets you sum up the values in another table or query. So if you're on the customer form, you could sum up their orders, for example. So if you don't know what DSUM or DLOOKUP is, go watch this first. Also, make sure you understand concatenation. One of the things that throws people off a lot when putting together multiple criteria in a DSUM function or DLOOKUP or any of those D functions is messing up the concatenation. So go watch this video, too, and go watch my little video on date math. There's lots of other date, there's tons of date functions and stuff. We're going to just use simple date math today. So go watch these videos first. They're free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them. Come on back. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. It's got customers and customers can have orders. And as you can see, I got one order in here for $4,200 and another one that's not paid. And all of these orders are summed up in this order summary queue. It's basically got each order and the date it was placed on and the order total is over here. If you want to learn how I built all of this, go watch my invoicing video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. Now, let's say on the customer form, you want to put a field down here showing their order total of all their paid orders in the last year. Okay, so we're going to use DSUM for that. Let's, uh, I've already got another currency value here. Let's copy this one, this credit limit field. We'll call this order total. All right, let's open up the properties. Here's the properties for this guy. And let's start off simple. Let's change the name to just order total. The control source, delete credit limit, and we're gonna put a calculated value in there. I'm gonna shift F2 so you can see what I'm typing. It's a little easier. Let's start off simple without any criteria except the customer ID. Let's say I wanna just see all this customer's orders, period. Okay, so equals D sum is our function. What field are we, are we totaling up? That's the order total. And if you're not sure what the field names and stuff are, go look in the query, right? Where are we getting it from? That's that order summary queue because it does all the math for us, right? And the criteria is customer ID equals and customer ID. That little concatenation there says take customer ID equals, take the customer ID on the current form, slap it in there, so the function gets customer ID equals four. Can you put this inside there? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I always just put it outside there. So it gets evaluated first then sent it into the function. All right, now let's save it, close it, open it back up again. All right, there we go, 4560, that seems about right. All right, I got 4200 and 360. Now this one's not paid. Usually you don't want to see unpaid orders in an order total, right? That's just, you know, call in for a quote. So let's add another criteria. This is great practice for criteria, folks. Back to design view. Let's go back into that guy's control source right there. Shift F2. Okay, right here. After that, we're going to add, I want the paid value to be true. And that's is paid. So we're going to say more concatenation space. Don't forget your space in there. You got to have spaces in here right and is paid equals true now that you can put inside there because true is a constant but make sure you got a space right there Sp the spacing is very important folks lots and lots of times people post stuff in my forums or they send me emails and it's all due to a missing space 
okay? Because it's got to be customer ID equals three space and space is paid equals true. So watch your spacing. Oh, and someone's beaming in. Hold on. Hold on. Energize. <laughs> I love that. That's my hourly chime on my clock for those of you who don't know. Okay. Hit OK. All right. Let's save it. Close it. Close it. Open it. All right. 4,200. That's exactly what I expect, right? 4,200 and that. Okay. Now the next one. Now the tough one. Now I'm going to add the date criteria. I want to see all the all the orders in the past year. I'm going to use simple date math. Yes, there's date add, date diff, all those date functions. But but in access, as we know from watching the date math video, a value of one is one day. So it's close enough. If you just want a rough order total, it's close enough to say date minus 365, right? That's today's date minus 365 days. Is it perfect? No, but it's, it's good enough. If all you want is a quick tally of how much they've, they've bought in the last year, it's good enough, close enough for government work, right? Okay, so let's come in here and we'll add this. All right, one more criteria right there in front of the quotes, space, and it's going to be order date is the name of the field, is greater than or equal to, and then outside the quotes, we're going to say ampersand date minus 365. That's one year ago. So the order date is greater than or equal to one year ago. All right, hit OK, save it, close it, close it, close it, open it, and there's your pound name. Okay, what does that mean? That means Axis has no idea what you're talking about. Why is that? Well, let's take a peek at it. Back to design view. Let's go take a look at it again. Now, take a look at exactly what Access did to that criteria. Take a moment, pause the video if you have to, see if you can figure it out. Anybody? Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. And if you don't get that, you're, you're too young for my classes. Um, <laughs> all right, look what it did to date. It put date inside of square brackets. That's access trying to be nice. If it doesn't recognize someone like customer ID earlier, it put it inside of square brackets, meaning I'm gonna look for the customer ID field. It's looking for a field called date, and that doesn't exist. It shouldn't exist. You shouldn't use date as a field name. It's a reserved word. All right, so this is one of those instances where you have to say date, open, close, parentheses. That will now use the date function. The date function returns the current date. All right, now hit OK, save it, close it, close it, open it. And the error's gone, but, hmm, correct me if I'm wrong. Let's take a look at the order date. Okay, today is currently 2024, September 15th. So I should only be seeing orders after September 15th of 2023. So this is, this is too early. This should not be showing up. What's going on here? Technically, I shouldn't be seeing anything because the other order is not paid. So why is, it not, why, is, why is it not obeying my criteria? All right, well, if we go back in and take a look at it one more time, I promise this is it. I like, I like to show all the, the wrong things that people do first, so you better appreciate the right way to do it. And this is another mistake that I personally make a lot. Date values in Microsoft Access have to be encapsulated inside of these guys. All right, you need a hashtag there and after the date. Okay, otherwise this will get treated as a number and it won't compare properly to the date field in the table. Okay, now when you do it, save it, close it, close it, open it. There, now that's, the, that's what I was expecting. I should get a null value because there are no orders in that date range. If I change this date, let's make this, uh, well, let's make this 2024. They got to refresh the form here, so I'll hit F5, and there you go. Now it's working. Okay, if you want to handle that, you can use the NZ function. Whoops, you can handle it. Well, let me, let me put that date back first. Let's put this back to 2023. All right, F5, and now it's blank. If you want to put a zero in there, use the NZ function. That'll convert the whole thing, if it's null, to zero, right? NZ, and then put this whole thing inside of NZ. What value do you want if it's null? Give me a zero. 
All right, I got a whole separate video on NZ. I'll put a link to it down below if you want to see it. And now we're good. Okay. So those are the big mistakes that people make when they're trying to do something like this with date criteria. The first thing is they're not using the date function and access is switching it to a field named date, which you should never have. Okay. And you got to make sure you put it inside of Octothorpe's. Yeah, they got many different names. Octothorpe, hashtag, pound sign, tic-tac-toe board. Any other names you know of? <laughs> I had to ask GPT about it. Uh, okay, hashtag, we got Octothorpe is the, is the technical or formal name for it. The pound sign in North America. Press the pound key, right? Number sign, obviously. The hash sign in UK. Uh, the sharp, I should know this. I'm a musician. The sharp sign, right? There's sharps and flats. I haven't read music, though, since I was in high school. Um, the hex symbol, that's right. You put that in front of hex numbers. And the grid. You didn't put tic-tac-toe board on there. Yeah, tic-tac-toe is another informal name. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. If you like this kind of stuff, I got lots of expert lessons on my website. If you don't necessarily want to learn VBA programming, but you want help with all this function stuff and criteria and concatenation and formulas and things with moving parts and molecular structures and... Yeah, expert lessons. They're more than the basics, but not quite into programming. I got lots of lessons on my website where we cover all stuff like this. But that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. I hope this helps somebody. If this helps you, put a comment down below. Let me know. I, it makes me feel warm to, and fuzzy to know that I'm helping people. All right? You'll make my day. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond Sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout-out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. 
So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond Sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a Sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.